Hey everyone, Jump for Nintendo Life here, with my best friend, the baby. And today, we're gonna rank every single Metroid game. But I'm not doing this by myself, I'm not just doing this with the baby, I'm doing it with the power of you. There's a cool feature on NintendoLive.com where you can review games yourself. Simply go on their page and say, hey, that's a 9, that's a 10. We asked you guys to do this for the Metroid series because using this data, we can form the definitive list. There's no arguing, it's science. So without further ado, hear what you guys think are the best Metroid games. Coming in right at the bottom at number 15 is Metroid Prime Federation Force. And hot take alert, hot take alert. I think it's pretty good. Yeah, this isn't the game anyone asked for, and it definitely wasn't the game to break the lull that Metro was experiencing. However, judged for what it is, rather than what it isn't, this is a pretty great co-op game. It's fine on your own, but nothing particularly special. But when playing with friends, Federation Force is actually a really good time. No hyperbole at all, I think this game got a really bad rap. But I won't argue it doesn't deserve this spot, because even as a good game, it is against giants. Being just a good game in the Metroid series speaks volumes for how great this franchise really is. But Federation Force does have some really good ideas, and even brings the Prime story forward. Those who finished it knew that Prime 4 was still on the way, way before Prime 4 was even announced. Then you've got Blast Ball in there, that's like a 2 for 1 value pack. Seriously though, Next Level Games made a really good game here, and the gyro controls are some of the best I've ever experienced in a shooter. They are so quick and precise. I imagine many of you haven't played this, but if you can, get a group of friends together and just give it an honest go. Yeah. Yeah. Then at number 14 is another Prime spin-off with Metroid Prime Hunters. There was a time where this game was basically the tech demo of the DS. We were used to handheld games just being 2D, but the DS came out with a full-on Metroid Prime style game. It was a massive leap, and while this was handled by NST rather than Retro Studios, the end result was still really impressive. It's kind of a weird Metroid game though. Instead of exploring, you're making your way through these very linear levels. There's sometimes backtracking, but think of it like level 1, level 2, level 3. It's very un-Metroid, and that's apparent in the gameplay too, which is much more combat focused than prior games. Keep into account, at this point, the only Prime games were Prime 1 and Prime 2 on GameCube. In those games, combat was not a focus. You lock on, you shoot, you barely even aim. But in Hunters, all you have to do is sprain your wrist, and you can aim completely freely. The single player isn't remarkable, the levels are fine, and many bosses are reused, but the main attraction of Prime Hunters is actually the multiplayer. This is essentially Metroid's version of Quake. Much like Federation Force, this game's best in the right circumstances. On your own, both games are pretty average, but they reach their true potential when playing with others. And number 13, you most likely guessed, is Metroid Other M. This is the last of the controversial Metroid games, but again, honestly, there is merit in this game. It's cool just experiencing a third-person Metroid game, and with that, many of the power-ups in the 2D games that weren't in Prime are here, like the speed boost for instance, and it looks awesome. Combat's really fast and snappy too, and the art direction as a whole is pretty stellar. There's some cool moments and some really good boss battles, but of course, this is a pretty flawed game. You've probably heard the same points regurgitated time and time again. Like, yeah, there are plot holes. Yeah, the Ridley encounter is quite embarrassing for Samus' character. Voice direction is stilted. There's some weird character motives. I will not argue this story is good. In fact, it's just fusion story again, there's barely any differences. But I can't tell you how many action games I've enjoyed with dumb stories, and this just feels like another one of those. If you take it very seriously, then yeah, it's an atrocious abomination. But if you just enjoy it for what it is, I think Other M can be quite fun. It's not great, but it can be good. Yeah. Yeah. Then at number 12 is Metroid Prime Pinball, and this is the first game so far where I have no but. It's not, oh, it's kind of average, but there are good elements. No, Prime Pinball is just pure goodness. In fact, I think this has been ranked far too low. <laughs> this is one of my favorite pinball games of all time. It's definitely Nintendo's best one overall. The idea of Morph Ball Samus being a pinball is genius stuff. And you're playing on tables inspired by Metroid Prime, so you've got like the Talon Overworld and Fendrana Drifts and the Phazon Mines. And the way it spans across two different screens is very clever stuff. It even came with the Rumble Pack. This just feels like an amazing pinball conversion, and in my opinion, yeah, it's without a doubt the best Metroid spin-off. And that Smash track that goes, Samus is under fire, that comes partially from this. 
All right, we are out of spin-off territory, and it's time to rank the main Metroid games. So at number 11 is the original Game Boy Metroid 2 Return of Samus. Now, I've recently replayed through every Metroid game, and I enjoy all of them by their own merits, but Metroid 2, I would probably agree, is the weakest mainline entry. Now, it's not bad by any means, it's a very ambitious Game Boy game. We're talking about a system that was known for Tetris and Mario Land, but Metroid 2 gave you a full, explorable world. It also introduced a new design for the various suits, and Samus is just synonymous with this look. Metroid 2 was a necessary evolution in getting us to Super Metroid, and it does many things better than the first game. But the core idea of turning areas inside and out and fighting the same Metroids over and over is a bit of a repetitive one. That and perhaps the visuals were a bit too ambitious. Many areas just end up feeling the same, and while many tracks are absolute bangers, much of the time the soundtrack sounds a bit more like this, and it's, it's not too pleasant. But being the least great mainline Metroid is not a bad thing at all. Metroid 2 has so many positive elements. Areas are very self-contained and small, and so the pacing is rather good. And also, the ending is absolutely iconic and an essential part of Samus' story. It may be a little rough, but Metroid 2 is a must-have Game Boy game. And then at number 10 is the original NES Metroid. I was quite late to playing this, and to be honest, when I first played it, I thought it hadn't aged too well. I just found it a bit too confusing and I wasn't really sure where to go, but after playing the rest of the series, I returned to the first game, and suddenly, something clicked. The first Metroid is very special. Yeah, the lack of map and the fact that some areas literally look the exact same can get a bit confusing, but it's also the most freeing game in the series. The objective is simply to defeat Kraid, defeat Ridley, and then defeat Mother Brain. That's it. Explore the world and take down two bosses. For that reason, I find this one to be the most replayable game in the entire series. I can sit down for just 30 to 40 minutes and just run through the game. It's very cozy in that sense. It's a bit intimidating to play for the first time, but once you've done that, returning to it feels like returning home. There's definitely limitations. You can't crouch and shoot, and so knee-high enemies are kind of impenetrable <laughs> until you get more four bombs. But there's so much to love, and I still adore the formula. But anyway, this game may have been remade, but the remake did not replace the original. There's still a ton of value in Metroid NES. Yeah. Yeah. And then at number 9, we're jumping back to Metroid 2 with Metroid Samus Returns on 3DS. Mercury Steam were made for Metroid. These guys understand how you make a Metroid game. Samus Returns not only brought the core franchise back for the first time since Other M, but it did so not just by looking back, but looking forward. This was an evolution for the franchise. Samus felt more powerful than ever. You can, you can wrestle with Metroids now. You can freely aim in 360 degrees, you can counter enemies. This was simply the most versatile feeling Metroid game to date. And all those flaws the original Metroid 2 had, like all the areas feeling somewhat the same, were eliminated. Samus Returns is a gorgeous 3DS game, and every single area feels distinct. And here comes the but. But, it's still Metroid 2. Some of you out there may love the premise of hunting Metroids, but if you don't, well this doubles down on that hard. Not only are there more Metroids to find, but fighting them takes way longer. These fights are far more elaborate. There's even some that escape the area and go to another one where you fight them again. The surrounding elements are all so good, but it's just draining to fight these Metroids again and again and again. And even some original stuff, like this guy, yeah, it's not so hard. That said, in my opinion, this is easily, without a doubt, the best way to play Metroid 2. It doesn't replace the original, but it is a much better game. By the way, with Samus Returns, we have reached a point where the rankings are so similar from game to game. Like, we're talking decimal differences. It's really, really close. Anyway, next game. Yeah. Yeah. At a rating of 0.08 higher than Samus Returns is number 8, Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. I'm not sure if you guys remember, but the first Wii game we saw was not Wii Sports. It was not Twilight Princess running on the Wii. The very first Revolution game we saw was Metroid Prime 3 and the anticipation for Prime 3 was palpable. All fans were excited, and you know what? It delivered. Metroid Prime 3 made me a believer in motion aiming. To this day, for me, shooters are much, much better with gyro. It's just so natural to point at the screen and simply move where you want to go. Far more intuitive than analog sticks. Now there is some stuff in this game that's not too intuitive, like pointing at the screen and pumping up and down, but those moments never last too long. 
This was a bit more of an action-y take on Prime, and to spruce things up, there's the brand new Hyper Mode. Now, this does slowly kill you for using it, but the power is so intense. You can take down enemies in seconds. Just watch your health. Instead of exploring one interconnected world, Prime 3 takes you around the entire universe. Your ship is kind of your companion in this game, and you'll use it for multiple things, but primarily, fly into completely new planets. This makes the core game a little more linear than the prior two, but it does work. And god, the art direction is amazing. Skytown in particular still looks as good as any current gen game. You guys may have ranked it as the weakest in the Prime series, and even if that's true, it's still an accomplishment. Prime 3 is incredible, and one of the very best games on Wii. And then at number 7 is Metroid Prime 2. Now, Prime 2 has people divided. Some find it quite intimidating, whereas for others, it's their favourite game in the series. I wouldn't be at all surprised if many people voted this as their favourite game. For me personally, I'm somewhere in the middle. I love the darker elements, and it starts off almost like a horror movie. Metroid's always been influenced by Alien, but this is just so apparent. But as the game goes on, you'll be going back and forth between the light world and the dark world. The worlds have the same sort of level structure, but everything surrounding them is different. Echoes has such a distinct vibe, and it's hard to deny the coolness factor. While Zelda was going very cartoony, Metroid was going darker than it's ever been before, and in fact it's never been darker than this. Prime 2 is just such a distinguished game in this series, and there's nothing else like it. It can get tricky in places, and that was balanced out a bit more in the trilogy version, but for what it is, Prime 2 is an outstanding game, and a GameCube must have. And then at number 6 is Metroid Fusion. Now this was the game that came along after Metroid's longest hiatus ever. There was an 8 year gap between this and Super, with nothing. Metroid skipped the N64 entirely. But then on the exact same day in 2002, Nintendo released not only Metroid Fusion, but also Metroid Prime. And at the time, Metroid Prime was seen as this huge risk. Metroid going first person with a studio from Texas? But in hindsight, I think Fusion was the much bigger risk. See, Metroid Prime was very much following the structure of Super, whereas Fusion was something very different. Instead of having this large world to freely explore, you're kind of following objectives now. Your computer Adam will say, hey, go to this spot right here. And while getting to that spot isn't always so simple, it's a different kind of freedom to prior games. You're always in the area you're meant to be in, and perhaps more than any entry in the series, Fusion really takes its story seriously. Everything is guided by the story, and there are moments where you break free from the map, but even those are kind of tied to the narrative. Fusion's reception has been very split over the years. Some Metroid fans think it's the best game in the series, whereas others see it as kind of a betrayal of what Metroid even is. But judged by its own merits, Metroid Fusion is a fantastic action game. There's some of the best bosses in the entire series, and the setting is stellar. The backgrounds are so vivid and full of life, and there's a ton of environmental storytelling going on too. Not to mention the SAX, their introduction is still chilling to this day, although I do feel the reception to their presence is a bit overblown, as they're hardly even in the game. Like yeah, this is a powerful scene, but otherwise whenever they appear on screen, you just stay still for a bit and then they're gone. I think you have to look at Fusion in a very different light to the other games. If you compare it to Super All Day, then yeah, its flaws are gonna look pretty obvious. But just being a fun, narrative-led action game, Fusion can be really, really good. Without a doubt, one of the best games on the Game Boy Advance. But then number 5 is Metroid Zero Mission. And you may have been able to tell, but I am one of those people who lean a bit more negatively on Fusion. I like it, but I don't love it. But that's okay, because Metroid Prime came out on the exact same day, and only two years later, the Game Boy Advance would get another Metroid game with Metroid Zero Mission. This was the first remake in the series, and in my opinion, it's one of the best Metroid games. Now, I do love the original, but Zero Mission is in another league. Before this, Metroid had never felt better to control. It's just so fluid and fast, and the pacing never gives up. This game relishes in its brevity. Every moment feels justified. There's not a single part of the game you could take out. There are many things I like in Zero Mission more than Super. It does have a bit of linearity, but it doesn't hold you as much as Fusion does. Sometimes Chozo statues will say, hey, go over here. But getting there can be far more complicated, and sometimes it's just telling you to go to a different region. In fact, many of these hints can be bypassed entirely. And one of the best parts of Zero Mission, there are hidden paths just for speedruns to make tedious moments less of a chore to traverse again. There are complex maneuvers to do, like shine sparking with the morph ball, and sometimes when you do that, there are hidden blocks you can use to get you through the path faster, and you would never find those blocks in normal gameplay. 
It's an absurdly well-made game, and while it's one of the shortest games in the series, it's built to be played again and again and again. There are some shortcomings, there are barely any bosses in the game, and the ones that are in there are pretty much straight out of Super Metroid. Like Ridley and Kratos are pretty much the exact same fights, but everything else is just pure video game joy. But then, at number 4 is the newest game in the series, Metroid Dread. When I finished my initial playthrough, I thought to myself, I think this might be the best Metroid game. Now I've had time for that thought to process a bit, and I might not regard it as THE best, but it's so darn close. Dread is incredibly well designed, and it does something far more organically than Metroid Fusion, and that's being fairly linear without actually feeling linear. You're never told where to go, there are never markers showing you exactly where you're meant to be, and yet you're always moving forward in the right way. I don't think I ever really got lost in this game, it was just so intuitive to know where to be next. Not in an easy or thoughtless way, but just in a natural one. It's the longest 2D Metroid, easily, and you're just always being pushed forward. There's so much variety and diversity, and Samus has never felt better to control. Mercury Steam took everything that Samus Returns did well, trimmed out all the fat, and amplified it. Dread was without a doubt worth the wait, it does so much right. In fact, I can't recall the last time I played a game with this much polish. This is up there on the Switch with games like Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey and Smash. It's just so good, and the story is so satisfying for longtime fans. I'm still thinking about the ending. Dread is simply a masterful video game. At number 3, we have Metroid Prime. How many 3D Metroid or Search Action or Metroidvania games can you think of? You're probably thinking of games with elements of that, like Dark Souls or even Batman Arkham Asylum. But how many pure 3D Metroid games are there outside of the Prime series? Very few, and that's because making this kind of game is such a daunting task. Metroid's already complicated in 2D, but breaking free into a third dimension is a tall order, but Retro Studios, on pretty much their first try, nailed it. Metroid Prime re-delivered the wonder of Super Metroid, but this time behind the eyes of Samus. Everything we loved about the 2D games was here, but the world was more realized than ever. It was much richer, and you can scan pretty much anything and learn more about the world. And at this point, the Metroid series hadn't really explored that far. We'd only been to two planets, those Zebus twice and SR388, but the world of Talon 4 was so different. Outside of Ridley, every boss was new, there were new places to explore, like Fendrana Drift and the Phazon Mines. And technically speaking, Metroid Prime is still stunning today. This showed that the tiny GameCube was a powerful beast. Not only does it look beautiful and there's hardly any loading at all, but it ran at 60 FPS. It's still a remarkable accomplishment, and artistically, looks stunning today. There's so much that Prime gets right, the only negative I can think of are the Chozo artifacts you have to find right at the end, but even those are pretty fun to discover. It's just moment to moment greatness. Metro Prime is a video game you must play with your time on Earth. It's essential for anyone who plays games. And number 2 is a little bit of a cheat, but Metro Prime Trilogy. This is undoubtedly one of the best value packs you can get in games. Metro Prime, Echoes, and Corruption on the same disc, all in widescreen now. But what really sets Prime 1 and Prime 2 apart from the originals is the Wii Remote. Prime 3's amazing control scheme is back in every single game, and it works masterfully. You can hardly tell the games weren't made for this, it feels so native. There are some adjustments, like achievements in every game, and Prime 2's difficulty has been adjusted, but for the most part, this is exactly what you think it would be. There's not that much to say, Prime Trilogy is something that every Wii owner should have. It's just one of the best packages ever printed onto a disc. So how do you top that? In 1994, Nintendo R&D created art. Metroid 1 and Metroid 2 created the foundation, but Super perfected it. Super Metroid is the best Metroid game, as voted for by you. And this isn't some untouchable pedestal, there are things that other games do better. Fusion, Zero Mission, Samus Returns, and Dread have much snappier controls. Cycling through missiles with the select button isn't great in Super. I can point out some things that other games certainly do better, but when I return to play Super, it's almost like those elements didn't matter. This finds an amazing middle ground between the first game and modern Metroid, where exploration is the name of the game and is rewarded. You're never told where to go, you're trusted to use your own initiative at all times, and that's one of the most rewarding things you can do in a game. You will probably get lost in Super, and sometimes where you're expected to go is on the other side of the world, but figuring that out feels so good. I almost forgot how good this game was, like I was telling myself it's a masterpiece because it's Super Metroid, but replaying it 
every pixel just feels like perfection. It's easily the best soundtrack in the series, and probably the best soundtrack in a game. The vibes are untouchable, and there's so much diversity. Every single boss encounter feels unique. We're going from two of the first game to 11 in Super. The Super Nintendo is home to some of the best games of all time that help shape and define the industry, but Super Metroid is perhaps better than any of them. I don't believe there's a perfect video game, but this gets so damn close. You can take a screenshot of any area or any room, and it's gonna be iconic. There's no low point of Super Metroid. Every single part is justified and amazing. I've long debated my personal favorite Metroid as every game has its merits. For some time, I thought it was Zero Mission. But no, Zero Mission is amazing, but Super is just something else. It may not be the definitive Metroid in every category, but it is one of the definitive video games. So I'm personally pretty happy with this list. I mean, I wish Prime Pinball were higher, but you can't win them all. But if you're aggressively upset at the order of this ranking, you still have the power to change it. On NintendoLive.com, these rankings are dynamically changing all the time. So if you think that Metroid Dread is a 10, give it a 10. And maybe one day, it'll reach the number one spot. But if you enjoyed this video, let us know in the comments below. And of course, go to that subscribe button and nurture it and feed it and watch it grow into a much larger Metroid that's going to destroy the universe. And we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.